moving forward we again have four different species put forward to us which of the following are naturally found in our country black necked crane cheetah flying squirrel snow leopards let's now now it's high time that we explore these also in detail the black necked crane is one of the rarest crane species seen in india it primarily occurs in your ladakh region and here when it occurs that's because of its so rarity also and the conservation status they have declared it as your state bird the primary threat to the population of your black necked crane is your feral dogs so these are primarily dogs that are used for hunting these dogs go behind these birds and try to eat it and everything so it's not a human cause primarily yeah the human cause behind it is probably using of the feral dogs maybe for the hunting and everything but other than that it's this animal animal interactions this kind of a predation that has become a threat to your black necked crane okay the next species that again we will study in detail is your flying squirrel otherwise called as your namdafa flying squirrel namdafa flying squirrel again is occurring in arunachal it's one of those species which is also critically endangered finally the last one is your snow leopard snow leopard we've discussed about it several times snow leopard has a vulnerable category right now there was the first ever snow leopard census happening in our country last year so again that is news uh, you do see um, himachal pradesh declaring snow leopard as its state animal snow leopard is widely found in your kibber wildlife sanctuary over here snow leopard is also one organism which is seen in your himalayas of your northern side and even in himalayas of your north the the cold areas for example your sikkim areas etc the north eastern side also so when you look at all the four which is the one that is occurring in our country so i mentioned about black neck crane flying squirrel snow leopard the question is which of the above are naturally found in india that means we didn't incorporate it from elsewhere we were it was already there now we know about it there is one one project which is always it is you know all the last few years we've been hearing consistently about it which is your cheetah reintroduction project which means it is not something that is naturally found in our country so the answer to this question is 1 3 and 4 cheetah on its own is very important elsewhere but here when you look at the natural part of it which is endemic to our country which is uh, indigenous to our country cheetah doesn't fall under it the answer to this question is b 1 3 and 4 moving forward they've given three major categories of organisms and they asked bat b bird which one of the above is our pollinating agents what are pollinating agents see when it comes to certain uh, plant species what happens is the male reproductive organism and the female reproductive organism of the plant might be occurring separately either in two different plants or in two positions of the same plant anyway so from one to another from the female to the male or from from the male to the female you need to have a transfer of your reproductive cells and for that transfer you need external help sometimes this external help is provided by certain category of animals called as your pollinating agents if you look at bee bird these are all commonly known as their primary function in the ecosystem is your preservation of or doing this pollination why because if they don't do that what's going to happen the plants will not be able to have the next generation got it so what happens over here is be it bat be it bird all of them are pollinating agents the answer to this is d i also want you to jot down some of the other major pollinating agents which are there so beetle 
works as a pollinating agent. Moth works as a pollinating agent. As you said, as you can see over here, bee works as a pollinating agent. Butterflies work as a pollinating agent. Snails and sometimes even snakes also perform this function. So, have a look at it. Beetle, moth, butterfly, snake, snails ants. Then add it to that bat, bee, bird. Okay. So, some of the most common pollinating species that you see in ecosystems. So, I hope now that answer is clear. All three are intact. Moving forward to the next question. The next question reads as it's a description about a certain thing. So, let's try to understand that. A sandy and saline area is the natural habitat of an Indian animal species. So, our key points over there, sandy, saline, okay, something that occur, can occur over here. Uh, the animal has no predators in that area, but its existence is threatened due to the destruction of its habitat. Which one of the following could that animal be? So, this is an animal where somehow its numbers are threatened, its situation, its conservation is brought to question over here. In a quick look, when you look at all the animals given over there, there is an Indian wild buffalo, Indian wild ass, Indian wild boar and Indian gazelle. Okay. Uh, when you look at all of these animals, you do know that the wild buffalo and wild boar are much more common species. You do see a large number of them and they are not necessarily in a sandy and saline area. Wild boar, wild buffalo, especially when it comes to a buffalo kind of a species, it requires large amounts of water in its vicinity. So, you do know that it will not be this, it will not be your wild boar. Now, coming to the rest two species left, which is your Indian wild ass and Indian gazelle. Again, the point to be understood over here is the habitat. Gazelle occurs in even more dry conditions. It's not the ones that you see. Gazelle, primarily, you have extremely desert conditions. That is where your gazelle is likely to occur. What is left behind is the Indian wild ass, which is also important for this year, guys. This year's prelims 2025, there is a very good chance Indian wild ass can get as asked as a separate question. So, here let us have a discussion about that also. First, understand the answer to this question is Indian wild ass. Indian wild ass is otherwise known as your khur. Indian wild ass previously was in a very near threatened situation, but now Indian wild ass's situation is in endangered category. Okay, one of the most common habitats of Indian wild ass is your little ran of Kutch. Again, I want you to remember, though we call it little run of Kutch, this happens to be one of the India's largest wildlife sanctuaries because extensive area has been separated and kept aside for the preservation of the Indian wild ass. Okay. So, that is about the Indian wild ass. It occurs in sandy and saline climate and everything. Now, a little bit pointer on your little run of Kutch. That can be asked as a separate question. Little run of Kutch is an area that is there in Gujarat. I hope you do know that. Now, this is a perfect example of something that we study in environment as ecotone. Ecotone is an area which has very diverse uh, features occurring together. For example, a mangrove area. Mangrove area, it is dry. I mean, not dry, it is wet. It has a water component. It has a land component. But if you ask me, is it la completely land? No, it's not completely land. Is it completely water? No, it's not completely water. It is an intermediate mixed situation where you have the features of both the surrounding ecosystems. That is what you call as an ecotone. The little run of Kutch is one of the most expansive ecotones in our country. Why? Because this is an area where you do have large, large areas of land, normally very dry. But at times what happens is whenever there is any kind of rain or any activity or even if the way, what you say, tides come in from the coast, this area gets completely submerged with water. And then the water just moves apart and then the land remains in this marsh kind of a situation. 
So, little run of catch is one of the largest wildlife sanctuaries in our country and also the la one of the largest ecotones in our country. And this is an area that has a chance to get constantly submerged in water. Okay, so I hope that is clear.